Champion players, champion club. Melbourne wins another one. Yes, it is. Reese Terry brings up her 200 in style. Full Sam For all your sports news, reviews and interviews, you listen to the Sports Desk here on Sin. Hello all and welcome to the first edition of the Sports Desk for 2018 Season 1 Monday. I'm your host, Ben Pascozzi, and alongside me we have Michael Serple and Liam O'Grady. Boys, oh, how are we? How are we? The Welcome. boys are back! The boys are back in town! Oh, it's been nearly oh. 12 months. It is great to be back. You, you've came out of the wilderness. Wow. I came back from China just to be with you. I was going to say, I was going to say, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, I'm surprised you survived. Um, you, what were you drinking? Just um, hot tea or tea or... You can't no, hot water, water, no, 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 hot you? water. China is purely hot water. Hot water? Like, you could be dying of the worst form of cancer. Drink <laughs> hot water, you're good. You are fine. Living well. You know who else is fine? The Who's goat. Fine? The, the goat. goat. The goat. Look, there's a lot of goats in China, but I don't think they're the same kind of goats that performed as beautifully as they always do, as, as, as placidly as they always do. Um, the great, great man last night. Incredible. Yeah, Roger Federer. So oh. we'll start off right now with <laughs> some tennis. And that's a bit of audio there from wow. last night's win for Federer. His 20th Grand Slam win, taking out Chilich in five sets. Which means, and I've done my stats. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So he's man. played in 30 Grand Slam finals, if you can believe Slam, it. That's right. He's won 20. Means he's lost 10. A 66.6% winning percentage. Can you believe that? What an absolute oh, superstar. Incredible. And, you know, it's it's not like he's just entered the um, the Grand Slam frame. 36 years old and uh, 173 days as well. Federer is the third oldest man to win a major Grand Slam title behind Ken Woswell, who was 37 years and 62 days old. So, you know what? That kind of tells me that he can still go for a couple more years. You know, some another Federer fact here. Ah, uh, here we go. He's been number one for 302 weeks. Whew. That's a, that's a lot of weeks. Mm. Currently, oh. he sits at number two with the APT ratings after this series. And uh, pretty incredible. If, if he ends up playing in Wimbledon again and he's got every chance of backing, well, going back to back to back in that, then potentially he will be back at number one again. I think Nadal's only in front by about 150 points. So and Nadal might be, you know, the injuries might be flaring up for him. It certainly will. And yeah. um, with, 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 with more heat troubles potentially at Wimbledon, you just never know with England weather. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, it could you be know, a whole 19 degrees there. It, it, could, it could really be. It really? gets quite balmy there after 19 <laughs> degrees, mate. I'll tell you. Oh, it's a different kind of heat. Oh. But this was just a sensational game. Pretty incredible, though, that Martin Chilich, we've got to give him some... Um, is it Marin or Martin? Marin. Right? It's Marin, Marin isn't it? Yep. Yeah. It's a silent T. Um, so Marin Chilich, incredible that he was able to get it to five sets because oh, he had one of the worst starts he could possibly get. Um, he was down 3-0, um, so, so two breaks. And he just, you know, the fact that he couldn't even, you know, lay that big... That big hit, you know, um, he was given an absolute sitter and he, he couldn't put it away. Um, you know, the nerves the, the nerves were showing early, but um, to his credit, the uh, Croatian got right back into the game. And that third set, he was just unbelievable. And yep. Federer looked, I've got to say, a little bit wooden. Four a little set. Bit, I think he was set. showing his, yeah, he was starting to show his age right. a bit there in that fourth set. Yeah, he oh. was, he was, he was. But hey, credit to Federer, that was his um, back-to-back um, Grand Slam wins against him. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, it, it's good to see that there was a bit more of a fight, because I remember last time um, he in had Wim- blisters yeah. in Wimbledon, and um, it's quite ironic that in Federer's quarterfinal, in fact... Against um, the main man. Against the main man, who I think we should give a major shout-out to. Oh, um, the big boy Wayne himself. Chung. Incredible from South Korea, was in the South Korean army, so I, I thought maybe blisters would be maybe the least of his well, actually, concerns. Actually, everyone in South Korea has to join the army after 22 years. There you go. In the army. Fun I, fact of the day. I think I think it might be the same as Turkey as well. Um, yeah, I'm sure a couple of countries. Um, it's, same it's, as Ukraine. 
Same and, as Ukraine, uh, Serbia. Go. and Serbia. So there you go. So a couple of hardened players from those countries. In Australia, we um, we sit back and relax for two years after we turn 18. And it's incredible. Before we get back to Roger, some of the actual seeds have changed, obviously, since um, the Grand Slam has finished, including uh, Chung, who now is, uh, I think, 29th seed after that tournament. Wasn't even seeded before this tournament. And he um, is an up-and-coming superstar. Oh, he played phenomenal. And the fact that he could play, and I was old like you, you mm. we thought he had blisters. Like, oh, you know, come blisters, on, you know, come on. And then you saw, you know, a massive hole in his leg. You're like, whoa. Whoa. Oh, sorry, his foot. But... <laughs> Oh. It, probably, it probably led into the league as yeah. well, but, but it, it's just it's phenomenal, and, mm. and, and you can't honestly underestimate just how much pain they would be in playing with blisters because because oh. you're constantly on your feet yep. as a tennis player, you got you got to reach that, and, and the courts aren't that soft either as well. No. So uh, particularly if you're playing on hard courts, it would be very very difficult. But um, yeah, guys, if you were to put this kind of open to, to something, what, what, what would it be? Would it be the, the, the heat kind of things? Would it be the crowd being a little bit restless? Would it be Kyrgios looking a little bit good? Is it, was it Will Smith's um, little cameo? Nah, it's what, Will what, Smith's what, cameo. What, what, is this, yeah, what is this tournament going to be they remembered get, for when we talk about it in 100 it. years' time? They did not get jiggy with it. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was a very cheeky comment by <laughs> Kyrgios when he mentioned, um, when he mentioned oh, I, I only watch Focus because of Margot Robbie. I'm just like, gee whiz, gee, that's a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a fair comment, but I... Yeah, it's good to it's good to see some features. Isn't Nick Kyrgios like I don't know if you guys are wrestling fans, but you know wrestling you've got the good guy and the bad guy, yeah. and the good guy can turn bad. Yep. He's, he's like a tennis wrestler. He, you know, one day you we all cheer him, then he turns bad and we all boo him. Yep. Then he turns good again. Like, oh, then he yeah, turns good again. Him. You know, like we're all behind him this um this year. He's a way to um the French Open, and he'll, yep. be do, he'll do something wrong, but like, oh, let's hope he gets out first round. That's right, that's right. He's very flamboyant, um, oh. but I'll tell you what, the, the game against Tonga um, was probably one of the best I've seen him play. So, Oh, he can play, though. Like, he will will he get a coach? We're not too sure, but um, it, it's very interesting. But um, no, really good tournament. He's now 14th seed, so he's doing very well for himself. Um, but we've got to get back to Roger. Uh, in, incredible form from him. Um, and 41 winners, 24 aces, you know, he's just he just... He always finds a way. Yep. And he'll, he'll just be continuing to do this uh, for, for many years to come. And, yep. and he's right up there with the absolute best. So is he the greatest of all time? You know, if, if you talk about best sportsmen um, in different categories of sport, just he's quickly certainly right as up well, there. Um, let's give a shout out to the women's winner. Yes. Caroline Wozniecki. Oh, there you go. I've got fully tongue tied there. Who was actually, um, you know, just casually going around yesterday in Denmark in her home country, just uh, meeting with the Royals. So good on her. Yeah. How'd um, you do? Incredible. Um, Shout out though to Simone Hallett though she she did it pretty tough she actually oh, it was a fantastic game it was a fantastic mm. game and um, she was actually rushed to hospital the next day with dehydration so um, pretty full on it, it it does take its toll it has been a very uniquely hot uh, Australian been, Open yeah. and uh, you, you saw players like Gail Monfils earlier in the in the tournament just really really struggling with the heat and a lot of those European players probably not too used to it so no. but well done to Wozniacki it's her first ever Grand Slam yep. title um, um, after um, coming runners up twice in the US Open only um, exactly. 09 2014 so you know you, it's a long time especially 09 with her Absolutely. first loss long time Absolutely. between I wouldn't say drinks between sips, really. She didn't really get to have a drink until now. No, no, exactly. So long time between sips. Absolutely, long time between little sips. And yeah. um, no, no, she does very well. But Simone Hallop, um, number one seed coming into this tournament, um, did very well to almost defend that number one ranking. So well done to her as well. That seed grew into a nice little flower. It did. It did. It was lovely. <laughs> it was lovely. But um, an, an incredible tournament, all in all. Um, talking about bad boys of the uh, of the tournament. Um, one of our well, no, finest we, statesmen. I really even say tournament. One of, our, one of our statesmen. I wouldn't say finest statesmen. I think that might be a bit sarcastic. Did he one make of our, the tournament, though? But one of our statesmen didn't quite make it. Uh, it didn't quite qualify this tournament. No. But he did qualify for something else, Liam. Oh, he Do you know is, what that would be? I think he might be heading to a jungle of some sort. Might be heading to a jungle. Yeah. I, I don't know what tournaments are played in a jungle. Uh, can, you, can you remind me what tournament he's going to? Oh, I don't know. No, not Ronan, Ronan, not Roland Garros. No, 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 no. no. That, a bit overgrown. Where's he playing? Oh, Where are we expected to see him? Somewhere in Africa. Somewhere in Africa. Well, the probably Africa somewhere, Open. Somewhere oh, in an Australian yeah. studio, maybe. Ah, more likely. That, that, is, that is correct. So Bernard Tomic, the great, great man, will be heading into the jungle, of course, in I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. So With Joshy Gibson. With Joshy Gibson, of course, Shannon just Noel. recently retired. Shannon Noll. Anthony Mundine. Oh. 
And I'll tell you what, hopefully Anthony Mundine, you know, uh, I, teaches I can't him wait a thing not or to two. watch the show, but it looks like a good lineup. And apparently Anthony Mundine has been uh, chosen as the leader, so of course Shannon Knoll has been, of course, robbed again for, for, for winning. That's the story of his uh, life. Story <laughs> of his life, story of his life. But uh, it's a very interesting cast going to the jungle. Now, Bernard Tomic does say that, um, you know, he wants to show people his, you know, his true personality, his true self, and he believes this will be the best way he can do it. So, um, look, I, I don't know how he's going to do it, but um, the cameras are going to be showing 24 hours a day. You see, I thought yeah. Grand Slam wins would be the way to show him, but I, 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 was, so I didn't too. know tennis like he does. That, that'd be quite the conventional way, but of course, in this day and age, um, you know, publicity almost means more, really. Um, so... That, but that is our tennis wrap. That is yeah. incredible. Um, of course, Roger the Dodger, 20th Grand Slam title. They're going to be naming Fed Square for short oh, now. Yeah. Um, he'll be the next He'll be the next big thing there, which will be good. So they're going to try and fit that on his um, pink uh, Adidas shoes. One last thing. He's yep. six Australian Open. So he ties the record with Roy Empson, the Aussie. Good on And Ellen. the jock himself. And the jock himself, which you'd imagine in future years may be back again to contest oh, no, that I think title. the injuries might be getting, getting well, ahead of him. Could be getting the better of him. But, um, you know, Roger is fit as a Dodger, and uh, he'll be there for many more years to come. We will see. Fingers crossed. All right, coming up next, we'll be talking some cricket. Listen to Sports Test here on Sin with Ben, Michael, and Liam. And, boys, we're going to get into some cricket. Wow. wow. What was what was worse, the Aussies choking or that fish burger at the new Perth Stadium? Oh, oh. i got to say, I, I've never seen... $12.50. Oh, I know, right? I've never oh. seen a fish fillet like that, particularly split into half and... Oh, gee whiz. Uh, and, and, and that burger as well uh, looked like a bit of stained barbecue sauce. I don't know how long those uh, brioche buns have been uh, sitting out in that Perth They've Stadium been there for. The did you, did you order stadium? a fish fillet burger or yep. fish finger billet? <laughs> fish finger it's, burger. It's so. an interesting one, isn't it? it it's it, it didn't look uh, safe for consumption. Um, oh. But but what did you guys think of the Perth Stadium? Oh, the did, stadium did you like the look of it? The stadium looked absolutely beautiful. Can't couple, wait for them to host the twenty thirty seven grand final. <laughs> couple of shots there made it looked a, an awful lot similar, like the MCJ. There, you got to admit, it's just from ground level, just looking at the way You're the grandstands mm, design, yep. it's just fantastic, and I quite like. I think you saw behind the uh, behind the uh, wickets on either side. You could see how the stands they were actually elevated. Yeah. Like so, there wasn't the uh, the first row wasn't on ground level. It was actually a couple of rows what? ahead. And I think oh, that's yeah, for that's... is it for corporate or something? I think yeah, below I think so. hand. But I, I quite like it though for fans. I mean, the first mm. row mm. you get a bit of an elevated view and you can actually see more of the play rather than be on ground level. God, but... I can't wait to watch Frio lose a bunch of games in that stadium. <laughs> That's what I can't wait for. Well, I'll tell you what, they, they certainly can light the stadium up pretty well. Of course, you saw when um, the transition um, from the furnace, as they call in the Big Bash League, to the Optus Stadium, you could see the Optus Stadium yeah. lit up in orange, just kind of like this is the next frontier for, oh, for cricket so in, uh, in well. the West. Because you look at the stadiums, the Gabba, mm. SEG, MCG, mm. even um, Blundstone Arena in Tassie, mm. and the arena in Tassie, mm. and the Adelaide, they all look like nice, you know, 25,000 big stadiums. And then go to the Wacker. And, 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 and I've got to say, that the Wacker, you go there, like, if you've ever seen a match at the Wacker, like, the seats are pretty dilapidated, were pretty dilapidated. Mm. Um, it's it's really quite a small stadium. A lot of, like, they make it look so big in the images. Whenever you watch a test yeah. match there, it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. Great camera tricks. It looks like it's on the Nullarbor plane somewhere. But it's just incredible just how oh. small it is when you go there. Um, but but it was quite an ageing stadium. The pitch was doing all sorts of things. I don't know if they ended up grabbing um, uh, Tony Gregg's keys out of there. I, I, I think they might have to extract them out of the pitch eventually. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you what, though the new pitch where the um, where of course the fifth and final ODI was played yesterday um, looks like the pitch has got a bit of ticker, guys. Looks like it's got a bit of bounce. A um, couple is what balls like went past. See. Yeah, a couple of balls went past Tim Payne. I remember one of Josh Hazelwood. So, so could they could they have, could they have gotten? It'll, it'll be same curator as the Wacker potentially. I think so. I think so. Absolutely. So he's but brought the brought across. the bounce back to the new Optus Stadium. So that's that's great, great. Great for cricket. It's great for great. WA. Nothing, nothing better you than a good see. bouncer. Yeah. I'm and, not if you're a batsman facing it, but... And because they're doing footy, footy games now, I'm, I'm assuming that that was just a drop-in pitch as well. Yeah, I think, so I think all grounds are now yeah. just their drop-in pitches just now. Just drop-in pitches. But pretty amazing. And uh, a couple of likenesses, as we are just saying before we went on air to the MCG as well. Um, not it, a bad standard to be compared to, though. Not a bad stand at all. Um, but it doesn't look like they need any light towers for this one because it's, um, oh, it's, it's a pretty, pretty bright, yeah. te- tech stadium. Um, no roof, though. Um, interesting. No roof, no roof on the stadium. So 
fair enough. Um, but probably in the West, you probably don't get that much rain anyway. So, but but to get to the ODI, it has been a pretty disappointing series for Australia. Um, but then again, to be honest with you. Once you win the Ashes for, uh, four, I was about to say five nil for a second there, but um, four four nil, um, four point five nil, four point five nil. I think it's pretty fair to say. I think I, I think if we played another two days, it might have been interesting at the MCG. <laughs> but let's not get into it. Um, yeah, look, a, a few fa- uh, decent perform- performances from Andrew Ty. Um, Pfeiffer, which he would have yeah. loved, you know, being on his on his main deck, and, and even Mitchell Marsh with the ball, he was he was doing a few things as well, um, which we haven't seen for that long. I think Marsh is probably one of the standouts of the one day team. Him and Finchy, he's been very good, and Finch at top of the order as well. I'm so glad Finch didn't tell him what state he's actually from, as he probably would not have got picked. Exactly oh. right. Oh. It's good to see Victorian in the side. Uh, then um, they got Maxwell in for the last one. I was also, oh. yeah, yeah, you know. Um, I had a heart attack when I saw that. Drop Cameron White and uh, get Glenn Maxwell in there. It's great. Yeah, well, the stars aren't doing anything. So. No, no, exactly, exactly. They're, they're, on, uh, they're on long service leave. But what um, I was more happy about was yes. my man. Your man. Stoinis. Stoinis. 87. Oh, Damn, you love him. But, oh, I love Marcus Stoinis. I just love how he chews his gum. He's got a bit of notulence about him. He's Has great. Has two ways to spell his name, apparently. <laughs> yes. There were a couple of uh, spelling errors uh, on, on the old on the old scorecard, which is uh, which is pretty interesting. But um, the the the, ga- the game ended up uh, tying up when um, Australia bowled at England for two hundred and fifty nine. So probably Fun wasn't fact. too sure what a what a what a score. Fun there. fact. Yep. The highest score ever at Optus Stadium. High score ever. Unbelievable. What an amazing fact. Who and Australia thought? went on to score the lowest score ever. Oh, I know. Unbelievable. When does that ever happen? When has that ever happened? Mm. And England recorded their first win at the stadium ever. The and first Australia- win of, of all time at that stadium. And Australia recorded their first loss. <laughs> How fitting. How fitting. Was, oh, How fitting. But, you know, England, um, England made 259. Didn't know what a pass score was at the ground. Both, both teams were bowled out before the 50 overs um, concluded. But Australia, pretty vali- valiant kind of uh, run chase in the end. I think they were four for 189 at one stage. They were looking so fantastic. They were looking choked. fantastic. Oh. And, um, you know, you had you had Stoinis, your man, and, um, and our man, Glennie Maxwell, put on a very nice partnership, but unfortunately couldn't get him over the line. They Australia capitulated towards the end with Tommy Curran. Um, who has very nice variety, as we saw um, in these last couple of test matches for England. Played very, very well. Yeah, um, five five for as well. So, so two Fifers in the match. Um, it may look like a bit of a bowling yeah. ground, this one. So, so that's always good for the West, because we know, we know how much batting is done at the Wacker in the past. So, no, excellent, excellent game. And uh, that wraps up the ODI series. The big England question about this ODI one. series is... I think we tuned out just like the Australian team did after. We did. We did after the Ashes, after the Ashes triumph. Maybe it's because of England, England's hideous uniform. Yeah. And we're yeah. not wearing our um, green that we used to wear. I miss the green for the Commonwealth. I, I, I do miss the green. I but do miss the green. The, the yellow was for international. So when we played you know, other countries one day, the green was for Australia. That's right. That's right. It's 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 incredible just how how many different colours they pull out of all oh. these different nations. Go back and you should look at all the one day kits. They're hideous, hideous, <laughs> hideous. Especially New Zealand. Hideous. Oh, oh, yeah, they're absolutely disgusting. Oh, they're gold and like brown. Oh. Oh. Dreads, dreads thinking about. Talking about different colours, though, Liam. Um, the Big Bash League has been another big bash this year. Ah. It's, I'll tell you what, it, 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 has, it has captured the nation. When, as soon as the Ashes are finished, everyone goes, what's on now? Big Bash. You know, yep. it, It's one of the biggest spectacles in our country at the moment. And I'll tell you what, the Big Bash League semi-finals are out, and uh, three teams who have, I believe, have never won a title... Oh, did someone tell you that earlier? <laughs> ...have never won a title? Just a gut feeling, Liam. Just a gut feeling. Just a gut feeling. Just a gut feeling. You are an absolute genius. I, I certainly know the Melbourne Renegades haven't won anything, that's for sure. I think... Have they even made a final series? Yes, they, they have. finished first oh, in their have. second season and choked. They choked, um, right. It's really weird. Seems to be a Melbourne thing. No, because they're playing yeah. Adelaide, who's finished first, I think, two years in a row, mm. and, yeah, choked both times. So it's on who chokes the least, really. I actually, I actually back the Renegades in that game, but but we should we should run through the fixture. So of course on Thursday, February the first, which is coming up, Perth Scorchers up against the Hurricanes, and that one is of course at yep. Optus Stadium. So the first Big Bash League game at Optus Stadium. How fitting! Yeah, 
Um, be a hell of a game. They're not going to do the cap. I know they're going to think about doing capping at 40,000. Now, now, guys, what is your prediction for this game? Because uh, the Hobart Hurricanes, um, despite their pretty slow start to the season, have been quite impressive with, of course, led by Darcy Short, who's just been exceptional, and uh, Joffre Archer, who's been well, excellent with the ball. I think um, Hobart proved a few years ago when uh, I think they played the Stars, and the Stars undefeated that, or I think almost undefeated that year. That's correct. And got over them and ended up losing the Perth in the final, but still, can't count uh, the Hurricanes out. Yep, certainly. They certainly seem to be um, a lot better place than what they used to be, but the Perth score just very hard to go past them. Oh, lost one game. I think you know, no, they lose two. I don't one know, or two. Yeah, maybe one or two. Um, and honestly, they, they are looking like the talk of the town at the moment, and they certainly will be. On Friday, February the 2nd, Adelaide Strikers up against the Renegades, up against the Gades, as they're called. And uh, they're going to be they're gonna be pretty hard to beat, I reckon, Um the Renegades. They've, been, they've looked very good. I don't know if Bradley Hogg will be back in for that one, but uh, that'll be an interesting game. What do you reckon, Liam? Who's, who's winning that one? Oh, I'm. You know one thing before before I say who's going to win that one? Mm. God, I hate seeing Peter, Peter Skittle. Skittle. Skittle, you know, Skittle, Skittle. Yeah. In, a, um, in an Adelaide shirt. It oh, no, just looks it wrong. looks unnatural, doesn't it? Oh, it does um, look unnatural. Before we go, let's jump quickly jump to the women, and they're almost finished their season as well. Sydney Sixers are flying with the Thunder as well, close behind them. First and second, pretty much look like it's going to be a repeat of last year's final, I think. No, so they played the Scorchers last year. But it looks like Sixers are going to take it out again, once again. Like they've been a dominant force very in the women's flashy. bash, yeah. Very, very flashy. So they'll probably take that out again. Um, also, currently at the moment, the under-19s Cricket World Cup um, is currently under place. Uh, and uh, Afghanistan have um, batted first after winning the toss. Uh, they are one for 40 at the moment in the 13th over. Um, and unfortunately, our man, the Pope, has not taken a wicket. But... Has he bowled yet? Oh, I don't know that... if he has. Yeah, I think all the quickies are on at the moment, but um, we will keep you posted throughout our yeah. show. And uh, if he starts getting any wickets, we will let you know straight away because when he gets one, he gets eight. That, that's how he. That's how he seems to go. Yep. So he's a very good player. But that is all of our cricket for this month. Oh, talk about a beauty! What about the AFL? AFLX? Come on! Oh yes. AFLX! You know, when I was a kid, the I went to Santa. Thing. Santa goes, oh. hey, Liam, what do you want for Christmas? I'm like, I want a sucker form of AFL. <laughs> I want no rotations. I want, <laughs> I want oh. only seven players on the field on either side at once. And if you touch I the ball, ten minute corners. Oh, oh, that wow. is what I want. And then Santa... This is so exciting. Oh. Wow. I okay. think, this, is there a shot clock? Okay, I... I there might be. There might be. Now, now we probably uh, should explain... Yeah, 20, 20 shot clock. 20 yep, seconds. Yep. See, that's what I want. I want my yep, football like that. to be like soccer and basketball. So you won't have, so you won't have your, your Mason Woods of the world just standing there waiting for the clock to count down and then, you know, have to kick the ball. Yeah, pretty much. So he'll, he'll, get the, he'll get the shock of his life having to <laughs> kick for goal. He, he won't oh. know himself. And, and I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm at Saar wouldn't be able to play this. You remember his old run-up? He used to oh, go for about five, five hours he'd or something. Off, he'd be off the field there. He'd be off the field, yeah. He'd just, just nice little running. Do you think there'd be any big guys? I couldn't imagine any power forwards playing. It'd be all the quicks. Big boy smalls. McAvoy? Oh, he probably Pens, couldn't move him. It's BT commentating. Oh, that, that's another thing. Would, you, would we think, see the debut of the gonna package? Be, do you think this is going to be too quick for BT? Do, do you think this 10-minute stuff's oh, going to be way too oh, quick he'll, for BT? He'll, he'll have a hernia or something. <laughs> oh. Especially, especially if he has the first moment. Now, and let's, we can all imagine this: the moment where the package oh. kicks it to oh, uh, He's the old fan fan danger. Danger. I tell you oh. what, I'm, I'm already, I'm already picturing my AFL XS in a lineup, and it's looking pretty good. It's like a BT special, and uh, I tell you oh, what, because the nice, forward too. line will consist of just Jake Stringer and. A Razi or Fantasia. Now that's a nice forward line, there. It's a pretty nice forward. Now, 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 before we continue, let's just explain the rules just off the top of the bat so people actually know how how AFL X works. Because because prior to this, I really didn't know how it worked. Because I've showed you no footage. Like there was no like no no there, models playing the game showing you what. No, there, to do. there were a couple of trial games in the VFL. I think last season. I think Port Melbourne were playing a few, but it, it's it's a different format. Um, and I don't know if it's gonna actually have all the major stars playing in this because it is quite rapid. Yeah, you don't want to get injured. And you don't want to get injured. Um, they, they're even talking about potentially having some ex-AFL stars come back as well. So mm. who knows? Maybe if Josh Gibson gets um, out, of the jungle. Know, out of the jungle early, he might be able to come back to this. But, okay, so pretty much it's a soccer-sized rectangular pitch. So it's like a soccer pitch, essentially. Well, yeah, most of it, that's, apart from the one that Eddie had, the um, ones at High Marsh in Adelaide and yep. the ones at, um, not ANZ, the other the soccer the other the soccer stadium over there, or the rugby yeah. stadium over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That stadium. That stadium. Yeah, mm. yeah. That stadium there. Um, they're all going to be soccer 
practically soccer pitches. Um, now, it's fast, free-flowing footy, which we always love to see. Only one umpire, no centre bounces, so we don't have to worry about the bounce. Um, no, kick-ins... No, 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 from... have to worry about the bounce. <laughs> they don't want to worry about it. So, so kick-ins from full-back after any goals are scored. So, um, yeah, so pretty much like, um, almost like Gaelic in a sense. Uh, and then, of course, um, quarters of only 10 minutes, so very, very quick quarters. Uh, 10 points for goals outside the 40-metre arc, so there will be 40-metre arcs in this. Um, and then the winner of the pools at the end of all the teams kind of playing, so it's almost like a, a like a round-robin kind of setup. The winners of that at the end will play a grand final. And, uh, yeah, so the spectacle will be good. There will be, of course, three different occasions where this will be played. And uh, it's going to be very exciting. I hope, well, we hope so. We hope so. We hope so. If the, if the big names don't play, like, I'm pretty sure Gay Out will probably pull a Hamish before That's that. Right. That's right, most and likely. Melbourne will probably pull out because it might be too dangerous, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but apart from that, and, you know, Brisbane might not show up like they've done the last three years. Typical, yeah. typical. But part of that, it should be fine. So the first, so the first night in Adelaide, it will be Port Adelaide, Geelong, the Adelaide Crows, Collingwood, of course, your mob, Fremantle, oh, yeah. the big team of 2018, and the new look West Coast Eagles. When I say new look, I mean new logo look. Yes, and a new jumper. New jumper, so very slick in they're Melbourne, co- of they're course. Copying, I think they're copying a bit of a um, Philadelphia Eagle look there. They certainly are. I tell you what, they're not the worst, not the worst. And then, of course, in Melbourne, we've got Carlton, Melbourne, Hawthorne, Essendon, North Melbourne, and St Kilda all playing on Do the same night really as well. you know what really surprised me? Collingwood's travelling to state. Yeah, that's like, strange. They know how to travel into state. They are the MCG specialists. They they do not play anywhere else on no, the planet. No, Maguire must be super mad about that. I think he would be. I think there'll be a protest starting up about that. And then, of course, the final round of games for the um, AFLX will be held in Sydney. So you've got, um, of course, the two Sydney teams, Richmond, the Doggies, Brisbane, if they show up, and the Gold Coast Suns. So interesting and... Um, a nice night of entertainment, a nice night out for the family. Yes. That starts later on in February, but what starts next week? Oh! And what I must say, not Friday. being biased. Friday, there we go. Friday. I'm not being biased, but the best coverage of last season. Uh, unfortunately, oh, oh, unfortunately we... Lucy's not here, but... But she will be doing her own podcast, so for all of our uh, sin listeners all out there who absolutely adore the AFL dummy, of course, all of our big Lucy fans out there, um, she will be doing a podcast, so stay tuned for that. She will be, will be doing that. Of course, we were the number one coverers oh, of the AFLW far. in its inaugural season, which we are, of course, very, very proud to boast, we are, and we will continue We are going to, to be cover. the Empire Strikes Back. We will be. We will the be. The better sequel. The better sequel. Um, it's going to be such a big season, of oh. course. Um, the Adelaide Crows were just irresistible last they season. Were. Of course, the Brisbane Lions were very, very good. They showed up. <laughs> they showed up. They showed up. They were great. They were great. Um, but there have been a few changes in personnel for all of the teams. Yes. Um, of course, now we're going to run through a little bit about what we're looking forward to, to yes. this season. Well, I'm going to start off with mine. My... Yep. Oh, I don't want to sound biased at all. No, but, not at all. Um, Stacey Barr watched her in the um, pre-practice match against Adelaide. Kicked yep. three goals too. Absolutely clunked them. Oof. She looks much better than she did last year. Looks more fitter, more ready to go. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping she can kick a nice bag. Um, unfortunately for my team, though, uh, Premiership player from Adelaide last year, Kelly Gibson, could be out for the rest of the season. Mm. And um, Kiara Bowers, who didn't play at all last year because an ACL still hasn't got back. So two or three of those big names are not there. But my last one I'm looking forward to... Your last one? Is the Carlton's big two. Yes. Oh, Taylor Hales and um, Collins Best and Fairs last year, Nicholas Nicola Stevens. Stevens. Um the the prize recruit for Carlton. Mm. They would be there'd be a lot They would be, be the favourites heading into the season. I was gonna yeah. say I was gonna say they they're, they're touted for a, a, at least a first or a second mm. um finish this season. Plus, Their forward line's well. gonna look amazing. You've uh, got you've got Darcy Vessio Harris and then of course Nicholas Stevens setting up play. So it, it, it's, there's going to be a lot of scoring power up in Carlton's forward line. They're going to be a pretty high scoring team. Oh, we I forgot think. about the um, the goal kicking. Oh, the goal kicking, of Mrs. course. Mrs. Vessio. Mrs. Vessio. Oh. You, you, you can't have a discussion without Vessio. She's she's going to be outstanding. We hope, um, as far as Collingwood's concerned, Mona Hope gets. Back yeah. to her. We didn't really see her best last season. She she had she a couple did, she of games us, where she, she gave us very little hope, didn't she? 
she gave us very little hope. Um, she, she's a little bit of a tease, but she, uh, she'll hopefully return to some good form because, of course, she was one of the marquee players of the inaugural season and uh, didn't quite live up to the big height. No, but hopefully, well, Carlton's the only team that's changed captains as well. They are, um, they are, Bianca absolutely. Jacobson. I think it's Bianca Jacobson. I'm confused because mm. I always thought that they, one of them got traded to Melbourne. Yep. And I thought it was the one that um, I know Lucy loved, absolutely loved, adored her. Oh, she did. And I think it's Bianca Jacobson. Uh, but yeah, I'm um, replaced. Yeah, well, yep. well, Bianca Jacobson, of course, is going to be heading to Melbourne this season. Oh, so it's not Bianca Jacobson then. Yeah, yeah, don't think it is Bianca no, Jacobs. That's a weird captain. Particularly she's yeah. at Melbourne. Um, but, yeah, Melbourne are also expected to do pretty well this season as well, I think, um, with all of those star recruits there. And, of course, uh, Daisy Pierce, who's oh, just yeah. one of the best of the best players. Brianna Davies, that's it. Brianna Davies, that's right, that's right. That's right. She'll, she'll be an absolute superstar well, she was, as well uh, again, She was the superstar last year for Carlton. Um, one person I'm interested to see hmm. is the Dusty Martin before Dusty Martin. <laughs> Is Erin Phillips. Erin Phillips. She won everything. What can't she do? I mean, she's a bit of a goat in her own right, isn't oh, she? You know, we talk about Roger the Dodger. She, she's a bit of a goat in, a, in her own right. And, um, you know, talking about going to the Winter Olympics, and she, she'll, probably, she'll probably be in the, the 2018 World Cup somewhere yeah. of some sort. She, she'll be around. Don't worry about that. But, um, oh, an, an extraordinary player. An extraordinary mm. player. Probably the best as it sits in well, the AFL. Hopefully um, the men's Adelaide team can have a chat with the women and be like, wow, that's how you don't wow. choke in a grand final. That's right, that's right. You know? They oh. should have taken some tips because they could have had all of the grand finals over all oh, the yeah. leagues. They could have. But they I think it's have... good. I'm kind of happy because I didn't want the double to be done so early. Like, no, that's, that's right. That's right. Give it a few years. That's right, that's right. You know, Give it a few let's years. Let's face it, the doggies and Frio aren't going to do a double anytime soon. You wouldn't expect so. You wouldn't expect so, unfortunately. But it's going to be a very intriguing AFLW season. Of course, here on the Sports Desk, we'll be covering that every day of the week. And we'll be bringing back the um, AFLW player, Sin Player of the Year. We will. We will, absolutely. Um, It it wasn't too hard to go past Aaron last year, but um, I have a feeling it could be something, someone different this year. I I just have a funny feeling. New Year, there'll be new people pop up. Katie Brown, who only played two games last year, might come back much more fit. She could well indeed, and uh, it's going to be a very interesting season you indeed. Know. You're listening to the Sports Desk with Michael, Liam, and of course our brilliant producer, Ben, with all the big tunes, of course. Um, and Got the bangers. Got the, got the absolute bangers. Of course, all the sports tunes. It's, it's a celebration of sport today. Not not just because we've had one of the best Australian Opens of all time, but Two um, finals. talking about the best of all time. NBA All Stars has been released for 2018. And one of the biggest robberies of all and time. And one of the biggest robberies of all time. And an and Australian highway robbery. Yes. Isn't it, Liam? Oh, it is. Like, you look for this team, like, that's a good team. You've got Curry, you know, you've got LeBron, you've got. Um, Very fitting. Duran. Very yeah. fitting to have those but, two skippers. But you're missing, you're missing one person. An Australian who plays for a certain team that has a number that I can't remember. Absolutely screwed. Ben Simmons. Benny Simmons. Benny oh. Simmons. No, no, has this been every... one of the best seasons we've ever seen from him? It's his only season. It's his only season. By an <laughs> so... absolute mile. There you go. <laughs> By <laughs> forward. <laughs> but he, he played to me. So he played some basketball in Australia before going over there. Yeah, but like you watch Australian basketball. <laughs> well, well, I'm sure a few of our listeners uh, out there yeah. would, be, would be. But this is the best season that he's produced over in the States. Well, he, was injured, to be, he was injured in his first season. Happens though. to be his, you know, his first one on the park. But it, it, mm. it, it definitely worthy for a first-time look in the All-Stars. And, uh, yeah, a bit of a robbery. So what honest. does he do when he didn't get picked? Goes out, scores a triple-double? Casually, as you do. You can't slot him in at the moment on form, can you? No, nah, he probably can't, can't you? This is, this is locked nah. in. Uh, but um, his teammate, though... Yes, um, yes. I believe I've lost him. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Joel M- Embiid, can you pronounce it? Joel Embiid. Alan Embiid, that's it, thank Embiid. you. Um, he made it. Um, 76 has got a nice future-looking team, with rumours saying LeBron might be joining at the end of the season. Mm. By all accounts, LeBron James is out of Cleveland. Like he's, He left like five months ago. Either to join LA or to join Philadelphia. You do feel that. You do feel that. Mm. Not, not, not that money is really a big factor for him anymore, but um, certainly I think, you know, where he feels most comfortable playing is basketball. And maybe he just wants to get out of Cleveland. And probably just get out of Cleveland as like well. Have you seen how the Browns play? And it's like, nope, I'm out of there. <laughs> 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 yeah, move somewhere else. But um, you know, some pretty some pretty, you know, um expected names here. Um 
We could we could run through some of them. What do you reckon? What do you reckon, Liam? Yeah, we'll run well, through some of them. I'm going to do a, my facts for the Your first facts, time absolutely. ever. Yes, yes. Our teams had the same f- four All Stars for two years in a row, which is the Golden State Warriors having Durant, Curry, Green, and Thomas Thompson. So they made last year All Four, and they made this year All Four. Never been done before, even during the Bulls' um, '90s heyday. So that's good feat by them. That's considering you know, they've won the last two out of three championships. Mm. Probably why. Interesting to see last year's um, MVP on the bench, Mr. Westbrook. Yeah, I was, I was very surprised to see that. Of course, um, that's that's a that's a strange move, but um, a lot of quality out on out on the court. So, and my big question about this is yes, yes. So they say Ben Simmons will be the first ever Australian to make an All Star. Mm-hmm. What does they consider to be Australian? If you are an Australian Ooh, citizenship and yeah. born in Australia, yeah. does that make you Australian? Well, I think that makes you pretty Granted, Australian. This person moved out. Of was, 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 he was born in Australia. Um, ben Simmons, yeah, but I'm talking about someone else. Oh, okay. So he was born in Australia, right. lived in Australia until he was two, moved to the States, mm. um, plays for the US team, yep, but yep. owns an Australian citizenship and a US citizenship. Kyrie Irving, born in Australia, but he's not Australia's first MVP. Not MVP, first All-Star. And, of course, he's sitting very nicely in there as a yeah. five-time All-Star. It, why? Come on! Just a question. What do you guys think of that? Do you think he should be that? Do you think he should be Australia's first All Star or no? Do you class him? I think Ben Simmons probably considered more of an Australian. Well, so, so we'll wait for years, him. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll wait for him. If he keeps scoring uh, the way he is, he'll definitely get into that keeps side. Keeps going, he'd be like the leaders of the A League. Absolutely, the Sydney no FC. doubt as well. Absolutely, Sydney FC. They've lost does what it, two games in the last two does, years. Does it, does it surprise you their form? Does it really no. surprise you? Absolutely smacked the victory on the weekend. Oh, the victory. 3-1 victory to the Sydney FC, not oh, not yeah. to the victory. No. Uh, no. But they just, they just don't lose that team. Oh, they just do it with ease. They just do it with absolute ease. And, and I'm liking their logo at the moment. Really yeah, am liking it. Yeah. I'm liking their logo. I like it. Mm. I really like it. Victory probably need to update their logo. Yeah, They've old, had that yeah. for years. Ever since the beginning. Of course, uh, recapping some of our other results as well. On Saturday, uh, Adelaide United got up against the Wellington Phoenix. And uh, Perth Glory as well scored a very nice victory over the Western Sydney Wanderers. So they're doing quite well. The Good old Perth side. Yeah, all the Perth sides are doing well at the moment, which is good. And all two of them. All, all, all two of them. <laughs> yeah, it, seems bit, it feels like there's more, but they just they just have oh, such a big presence. I also forgot about uh, Melbourne City drew with Newcastle. Yeah, that's... Uh, and Central Coast lost to the Brisbane Roar. So yeah. there you go. So, so, so three losses on the trot for uh, the Brisbane Roar. So, yeah, not looking the best at the moment. But, um, yeah, Sydney FC, of course, sit very comfortably um, on top spot. Nine points in front of um, Newcastle 7. That, they're, 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 they're your showing. You, they're well there's no front. other team's going to win. But good to know that both of the Melbourne sides are, uh, are, 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 yeah. on, are, are at the top some. Considering there, victory's um, poor start the to the five. season. Exactly, exactly. And they, they, they've been pretty inconsistent. And, of course, um. A uh, bit of news coming out of victory as well with oh, uh, yes. Mark Milligan departing. So after, that's uh, pretty much up to saying to play out the rest of the season now. So he, of course, he's going to go and and look for opportunities in Saudi Arabia, as a lot of people do. Oh, and yeah. Um, yeah, so so good on him. Um, and uh, best of luck to him. But he has been a good servant for the um, for yeah. the Melbourne victory. So I'm sure he'll get a, a fitting send off if he if, if he ends up playing. Better than what Kale got at the um, mm. Melbourne City. So <laughs> yeah. you're not like Tim Kale's the greatest Australian soccer player of all time or anything. No, no, not. At all. No, at all. he's at just all. an average Joe. <laughs> Not at all. And um, just just quickly recapping, Australia did get another wicket in the uh, oh, Australian under oh, nineteen yes. as well, and it was Merlo as well, Jonathan Merlo. So uh, uh, he's related to one of my mates, and you'd be happy to know as well, uh, Liam, that uh, Pope is bowling. So um, that's what we want to hear. We want to see the Pope in action. The Pope in action. And now let's catch the plane again. Let's fly to Philadelphia. Yeah. Well, no, fly fly to Minnesota actually. Fly to Minnesota. Yes. Oh yes, for the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. So this is going to be huge. How much will the Eagles lose to the Patriots? Oh, you don't have any faith in the Philadelphia team, the Phillies? No. Oh, well, the last time they played the um, the Patriots in a Super Bowl, they lost. Mm, so they did. They did. You know, stats don't lie. But how long ago was that, Liam? Two thousand and nine. I think. so not all that long ago. And I, I mean, our great great man Tom Brady would have still been the, playing. The, the American goat. The American guy. Like him and Fred will probably go out and eat some grass together. Now, of course, he's led the NFL this season with 4,577 passing yards this season, so that's huge. And no player to lead the NFL in pass yards has ever won a Super Bowl in that season. So if he does, he will be the first man in history to complete that feat. And at the age of 40, 
Uh, he's still looking pretty Fun. good. Do you know he was the pick 200? He was pick 200. Like, you, you think someone as a GOAT status to be pick one, you know, first round pick. He yeah. was pick 200. How was he pick 200? I don't know. How? How? That's incredible. Go from pick 200 to the greatest quarterback of all time. We don't even have pick 200s in the AFL. No. So you, you can't say a player who was, you know, an absolute out-and-out out superstar was pick 200. No. That's insane. Wow. What well, an absolute bargain. Do you, have, do you have faith in the Eagles? Sorry? Do you have faith in the Eagles? I, I, I actually have some faith in the Eagles. And I think I think wearing their, their home-style Guernsey is going to help them. I don't know. I've just well, got... Um, as far as superstition is concerned, just never well, know. the Patriots' superstition was that they've never lost in their away jersey in a Super Bowl. Uh, that's very true. We're in the white. So, um, I, they, you know, it's going to be interesting. So, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, so, was it the so when does that kick off? That kicks off at... Uh, was it midday our time? I think so, yeah. 10.30. 10.30, 10.30 our time. time. There you go, there you go. Thanks, so so uh, don't awesome miss out producer. on that. And, of course, don't miss out on the ads as well in between the breaks. <laughs> They're, of course, very, very entertaining oh, as well. Amazing. Interesting to see who makes a cameo this can season. Can we watch them? I don't think we can watch them. I don't uh, think no, they, can, they, they go on YouTube like a few days before anyways. Yeah. Just do a sneaky live stream. <laughs> sneaky little <laughs> like on those. Yeah. Um, gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure on oh, the show has... today, of course, um, working with you as well. Um, ben, br- brilliant, brilliant um, producing as as um, per usual. Um <laughs> With his, with his, uh, very good work, very good work, very good work. I'm lost for words. I really am. It's been absolutely outstanding. And of course, Liam, it's great to be back with you again on the oh, sports it's an desk as well. Honour to be with the great man. And of course, you, you'll be you'll be in on Wednesdays as well, yes. doing the your more serious version of the more sports serious desk. version of the sports desk. Which so um, I'll bring it. I'll bring a proper like serious voice, and I might even wear like different... a suit or something. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. You'll, you'll bring some, uh, like a purple suit, Fremantle suit. You oh, know, of course, yeah. I have the anchor and everything. To, to pay your respects for 2013. Anyway, we won't go into that. I have a badge for every premiership with one. <laughs> very good. <laughs> so you're quite an avid collector. Yeah. Um, very good, very good. And of course, I'll be joining you guys uh, on Friday as well with Ben.